Canadian military personnel sent info sent into nursing homes here in Ontario have observed shocking conditions, the details of which are outlined in documents sent to the federal government in Ottawa. Now, these allegations relate to alleged, quote, blatant disregard for infection control measures, mistreatment of residents, and a level of care described as horrible, according to these documents that have been obtained by Global News. Our Ottawa Bureau Chief Mercedes Stevenson joins us now. Mercedes just broke this story online. Mercedes, I read through some of these details they're difficult to even to hear about walk us through what is happening right now according to these documents in long-term care in Ontario yeah, so uh, Farah, when we read the, the documents, we were absolutely shocked. I initially started hearing things about this from sources within the military, that there were serious concerns about the conditions inside the homes. Then we had the opportunity to look uh, at some of the documentation, which are what these people, these soldiers, sailors and airmen and women are seeing firsthand in the homes. Uh, and it varies from home to home, but as you mentioned, everything from descriptions of cockroaches and rotting food, uh, forceful repositioning of residents, residents being fed uh, and having food put in their mouth when they are already making choking sounds, residents being left uh, falling asleep with food in their mouth, residents not being fed and hydrated as they should be, uh, concerns about a lack of proper protocols when it comes to protective equipment, people moving between COVID and non-COVID wards without changing their PPE, uh, in one case dancing around and making a Taylor Swift video uh, between COVID and non-COVID infected wards. In another case, uh, people were not told that someone had been testing positive for COVID and they were exposed to them without proper PPE. So what I have been hearing from military sources is that there's very, very serious concern for the well-being in the residents in these homes. Uh, I have talked to people who've said this is worse than anything that they've seen overseas, that they were astounded this was happening in Canada. And the concern here is that if something isn't done in the long term, these homes will return to the conditions they were in that the sources said uh, it pre-existed COVID. The COVID aggravated it, but these were much longer term, more systemic issues. And their fear is that the military is in the homes for now and they're helping out, but that when they leave, there won't be anyone else to see this. And, and frankly, you know, uh, one source who I spoke to said, if, if they're doing this in front of the military, what's happening when we're not there? So there's a lot of concern for those residents' well-being. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau speaking to this today. He spoke off the top. Uh, we started asking questions about this story a couple of days ago. Uh, he spontaneously addressed it off the top. He said that they're going to make the report public, but certainly what we read in there is, is very, very disturbing. It's deeply shocking. We have not received comment from the homes yet, um, who we do name in the story and are specific about, uh, about these allegations. I can tell you, sources in the Ontario government tell me they believe that things are getting better, uh, but the concern along a lot of military members is that it's better in the short term because they're there to augment staff. But what happens when they leave? And also, I mean, some of these allegations are extremely serious. There is one allegation that a resident was fed lying down uh, and that that resident subsequently choked and died. So obviously that's a very serious allegation. And I can tell you that a source inside the Ontario government tells me that that is going to be referred to the coroner's office for investigation. Mercedes, I, I mean, for us to listen to these to these allegations is difficult. I cannot imagine what it's like for people who have family members in these specific homes that you mentioned. Let me ask you, when was the federal government made aware of these allegations? Well, that's a great question, Farah. So I have I've seen a letter going to Bill Blair's office um, on April 14th, and my sources say that that's when it went. Bill Blair's office called me immediately before we went to air. They insist they received no such letter. They say they were only notified about this on Friday when the Minister of National Defense forwarded a letter to them. Uh, and that's when the Prime Minister says he was made aware of it too. They did not alert the province of even that letter, though, until Sunday. And it's, they say they were sorting through it. It's not clear why they didn't call the province sooner. I can tell you uh, provincial political sources are very angry. They were not immediately notified. So we're not sure what happened between that letter that's dated the 14th um, and then the minister's office saying that they did not see anything until Friday on this. Um, but they're saying they learned about it from the Minister of National Defense. So obviously there's going to be a lot of accountability questions here about who knew what when and who passed that on to the appropriate authorities. And I know that the Ontario government and Premier 
Jim Yerford will talk about this in just a few minutes, are also saying that they, where necessary, uh, not only are they bringing in investigators to look into these homes, they are willing to bring in law enforcement too if it's required. Do we know anything about the staffing at these homes right now? Were they understaffed? Any, anything about who, who is, are the staff members in these homes? Are they well trained? So the documents describe uh, staff who in many cases were simply not there, um, understaffed staff who didn't come into work, staff who were overburdened and exhausted, staff who were brand new and had been brought in to try to help and simply had not been properly trained, whether it was in the infection protocols uh, or in how to handle COVID or how to handle residents. And numerous times I was told by sources that uh, some of these staff were simply brand new and there was very little um, guidance and training Training on how to do their jobs. At times, they also seem to have struggled to find senior management to give direction or janitorial staff. So there's no question that this issue we've been talking about, this larger issue of making sure that homes are appropriately staffed, factors hugely into this. Uh, although some of the allegations in here, uh, you know, are, are clearly about, you know, did people know and were they properly trained? Mm -hmm. Others that deal with allegations of abuse and neglect um, are in a whole different category. Absolutely. I mean, and, and let's put that aside for, for just a second, because of course that, that requires a, a deeper dive. And as you mentioned, the coroner's office will be investigating at least one case. What about the equipment that these homes had? Because we've known from mid-March that long-term care hasn't had enough protective equipment. Did we learn a little bit more about that? There's certainly concerns about protective equipment and, and what the staff in some cases are doing with that protective equipment, both in terms of amount, uh, which seems to have improved quite a bit since the beginning, to how it was being worn. I, at one point it was described to me that staff were wearing N95 masks, but then a medical mask over it or a scarf under it, which defeats the purpose. Um, so there was concern about whether it was being worn properly. There was examples of people wearing multiple gowns going into a room because they think it provides more protection. That's not proper infection protocol. Uh, of people using hand and sanitizer on gloves instead of changing their gloves. Uh, it's not necessarily clear to me if that's because in those cases there wasn't enough equipment or if that wasn't training or why that happened. Uh, but we do have descriptions certainly of PPE in these homes not being used appropriately. And, and by the way, Farah, these are the homes that have the highest death rate for COVID-19 in Ontario. Mercedes, one thing that you said, it just sticks out to me, these military members saying that they haven't even seen a situation like this overseas, which is, is so difficult to comprehend in our country. Uh, there's going to be so much fallout. I'll let you get to it. I know you have uh, more work to do on this story. You can also read Mercedes' story on globalnews.ca. It has just uh, been put up. Thanks, Mercedes.